I'm at the Royal Society in London, the UK Academy of Sciences, and I'm here because there's a very interesting document about the elements iridium and osmium. And to help me find them, there's the archivist, Rupert, who is going to find these. Rupert's holding some cards with the papers that are in the archive by the discoverer of iridium and osmium, Smithson Tennant. So we're going down to the archive. I've never been there before, so I'm really excited. We're down in the archive and Rupert has got out for us the paper that announces the discovery of both iridium and osmium. That's two elements in one paper. And this is the manuscript. This is what Smithson's tenant actually wrote himself. And you'll see he kept on changing his mind and there's some examples where he literally cut and pasted it. So along here and along there are the edges of a piece of paper that has been glued on top. It's slightly different colour and he's used a different pen. This is not so historic. I used to do this before I had a word processor, so that's why it's called cut and paste. So the title, though it doesn't really look a title, it's more an introduction, upon making some experiments last summer on the black powder which remains after the solution of platina. Platina is a platinum containing material. The element platinum was already known. I get a slight feeling, though it doesn't quite say that, that he wants it published before the French publish the, the, this discovery. He describes here the experiments in quite a lot of detail, but unlike a modern paper, he doesn't have an experimental section and as a recipe, it's sort of, I did this and then I did that and then I did the other, without really telling a story in the way the modern scientist would, which is quite fun in itself. But now if we turn over here, so here, this is something I've never seen before. This is where somebody actually chooses the name of an element. So if you look down here, I should incline to call, you wouldn't write English quite like that nowadays, this metal iridium. Here is the name iridium. And here he says, from the striking variety of colours which it gives while dissolving in and I can't read the name of the acid, it could be muriatic acid, but there's a big splodge here. And so he called it, because some of you will have heard the English word iridescent, which you describe butterflies' wings, which have lots of different colours. So he chose the name iridium because of this number of colours. And I never knew that. So this is the first time that anybody ever wrote down the word iridium. Now, of course, he might have written it in his notes, but this is the first official record of anybody writing the word iridium. But then, of course, he discovered two metals. So we turn over the page, more cutting and pasting. So now I come to where he names the other element, osmium. Now here, clearly, he thought of writing something and made a big mistake because you can see he's done a big cut and paste here in which a lot of it's blank because he's covering up something that he didn't want to say. If I was a real historian, I would be using an X-ray or infrared camera to try and read what he said before because that might be interesting for the history of science. But let's read what he actually wrote. He describes how there is peculiar smell is immediately perceived, that means noticed, a rather strange smell. Now that's quite surprising because osmium is the highest melting point of any metal, so it shouldn't smell at all. This smell, as I afterwards discovered, arises from the extrication, that means coming out, of a... a he's made a mistake here, he's written A twice. A very volatile metallic oxide, that means one that evaporates very easily, this smell is its most distinguishing characteristic. I should, on that account, 
inclined to call the metal osmium. Here is osmium, and he's called this because of the smell. Now, the reason he's chosen the name osmium is because it is connected, and I'm not quite sure how, with the Greek word for smell. And the oxide he was talking about is osmium tetroxide, OSO4, which really does evaporate very easily. And it's intensely poisonous. But once, when I was young, I made a mistake and I did smell it. And it smells rather like hydrochloric acid. It's got quite a sort of acidic smell. But here, they've chosen the name because of the smell. So here, in this document, you've got the reason why somebody chose the name of two different elements and they've used a real reason. They've not used the reason that it's named after a famous scientist or something, but they've used a real property of the metal. Either it's smell for osmium or it's variety of colours for iridium. And I think that's wonderful. And you can see here in this archive, it's as if Smithson Tennant, a chemist who has been dead for many, many years, he was born 250 years ago, is really talking to us. We can hear his voice speaking, I chose the name for these elements for these reasons. There's another document which is quite an interesting little piece of information about Smith's and Tennant. It's about his death, his sad death. And there's a letter here from the president of the Royal Society, or the then president of the Royal Society, Sir Joseph Banks. You may have heard the particulars of poor Tennant's death. And it appears that Tennant was in Calais in France. He'd been on holiday and he went to Boulogne and the wind for the sailing boat was not in the right direction. So he went riding with a Frenchman and as they were riding over a bridge, the bridge collapsed and he was squashed under his horse. And he lived for a few days later, but he died without ever speaking again. He has, I fear, carried his discovery of, and I can't read this word, but the something of iodine away with him. So Smithson Tennant had a last discovery, and we never know what it was, because he died before he could write the paper.